Hallelujah. Austin has a testimony to share with us. Thank you, Jesus. Austin has been delivered of so much. He's been healed of so much. And God's delivered him layer by layer. So much change and growth has come in your life. I've seen, praise God. And so you have so many testimonies. I want you to share today this recent testimony that you shared with me that really touched my heart that has to do with freedom in your mind. So do you want to share, first of all, the bondage that you had in your mind, what was going on in your mind before receiving deliverance, and then also right after receiving deliverance? Oh, man. When I came to 5F Church, um, my body was shutting down. My mind was such a chaotic place. If I had to put a number on it, between 1 and 10, I'd give it a 1 or even a 0. It was just that bad. Um, I had mercury poisoning, so my, my nervous, nervous system was all messed up. My memory, I couldn't remember things for longer than a few seconds. I couldn't even think. It would just, like, stop. Um, I was hearing thoughts in my mind saying, I'm going to kill you. I had severe anxiety and depression. Um, and later on, schizophrenia had kind of revealed itself, and that was cast out as well. And so I was just in this place of just, God, what do I do? Like, I know this is not, this can't be right. This can't be normal. This, this can't be like what it looks like to have a brain, like a functional brain. This just can't be it. And so I had come to Fivefold Church, and God just over time was just delivering me in the mind. But then after I was free from so much of everything I just shared, it was then like a war in the mind to renew my mind daily, to get the word in me, to watch the meaty teaching, specifically the word that really changed my life. It's a teaching from back when we were in Elysian Park called No Longer Slaves. And that word specifically set me free from a mental bondage. It wasn't a demon, but it was a mental bondage that was tricking me to make me think that I needed more deliverance, more one-on-one -on -one prayer with Apostle Catherine in order to actually be free. And when the word... So you were free, but there were so many lies in your mind saying you weren't. And so believable sounding. Yeah, they're, yeah, the devil came as an angel of light and was saying, you need to be renouncing these things. Other people are renouncing. That's how you're going to get free. I felt like it was the only tool I had in my belt to get free was just to renounce everything I could think of. But when you had declared, this, is, this word is for you, you are already free. You just have to hold on to that and believe it. And when she had spoken that over me, I was like extremely skeptical. I, my body felt so like nervous. But I just waited for a second, and I was like, no, like, this has to be true, because what else is there? Like, I've done everything. And then the false manifestation just, like, stopped, and that was the end of a nine-month journey of false manifestation. And since then, God's been actually able to help me to renew my mind that it's done, and that the work up here is just, it's not a demon. It's just work that needs to be done. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And you shared something powerful with me that recently that you would you watch the no longer slaves message. That message was specifically speaking about how the devil basically like you've been when animals chained up for a long time and then the chain is cut so they're free to go, but they don't know any different. So they just stay in that same place and so they don't experience freedom. So the message was pretty much like that's how the devil tries to work in your mind. So you're not even experiencing freedom. You're free, but you don't believe it. You don't know it. You're not walking in it. So that's a summary of the message. No longer slaves on the Revival Army training playlist on my YouTube. Definitely watch it. It's so important for all of you to see it. But you said that you would, you've you been watching it like every week, you said, for how long? Yeah, the prophetic instruction you gave me was to just continue to watch this, especially if you come from that harder to get free place. And I've been watching it every single week, if not that one, then one of the Maintaining Your Deliverance series for about a year and a half. And every time I watch it once a week, every time I watch it, more lies are revealed and they fall off. And I'm just, wow, God, I didn't even know that was a problem. And it's like another thing every time. So glory to God. Praise God. And you shared with me also that you said you, out of, on a scale of one to ten, the torment in your mind, like sound mind wise, was a one out of ten. Like so almost just so bad. So what was, what is it now? Now I'd say it's a nine. And with this testimony, I'm going to get 10 in Jesus name. Hallelujah! <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. We rejoice with you.
you. You are family. We're so happy for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for sharing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Wow. I'm so touched by that one because it's personal. Um, he's on the official serving team, and, you know, he, he would write to me and ask me, like, I, I still have this bondage, I, or I still am having these problems in my mind, and I would give him prophetic instruction like he shared. And so for me, I'm just so overjoyed because I know personally the struggle he had. So to, when I heard him say nine, I was flipping out <laughs> the first time. I was so excited. God is so good. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, so that testimony was just such a perfect foundation to build this message upon that I have for you today. What you heard him speak, if you relate, God wants that miracle for you too. And you're going to receive that miracle today. It is God's will for you to have a sound mind. It is God's will for you to have a clean heart. It is God's will for all of that junk in the mind and the heart to leave you completely and this is such an important part of being a mature powerful vessel of God you got to get all that stuff out you got to be clean you got to be fully free the strongholds in the mind got to be broken and so you know prophetically this season this is where God is taking you all with this revival wave that is here and growing and growing God needs you to be ready God needs you to be mature and strong and not having to deal with yourself so much not having to try to figure out yourself how to be free, but be free, know you're free, and now be able to help others and be a powerful vessel of God, amen? So these teachings lately have been prophetic. It's what God wants to do right now. It's what God is doing right now in you is cleaning your heart, healing your mind, freeing you of all of that junk that you haven't known how to get rid of that's remained, amen? So um, today, today's message is called the renewed mind the renewed mind we're going to go first to romans 12 verse 2 it says and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs this is the amplified version but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is and that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. So here we have this instruction that you should not be conformed to this world, but you should be transformed and progressively changed and mature spiritually. And then this verse gives us the instruction of how to do that, of how to be transformed, of how to be progressively changed, of how to spiritually mature. It says, by the renewing of your mind. That is how the change, transformation, and maturity will come. That's the answer. Hallelujah. So we see already this importance of renewing the mind. And I'm going to teach you today how to do that and really what that means. Because some of you might not know. You hear renew mind. What does that mean? Ephesians 4.21, it says, If in fact you have really heard him and have been taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus, that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self. You completely discard your former nature which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature, Created in God's image, God-like, in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, spreading rumors, any such of these. Speak truth, each one with his neighbor. 
for we are all parts of one another. So here we have this instruction that we should be continually renewed, renewed in the spirit of your mind, complete, always having fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, and we put on our new self. We have a new self when we have given our lives to Jesus. We have this new self, and this new self is made in the image of God. Before you give your life to Jesus, you're made in the image of God. Everybody's made in the image of God. But then you have the choice to be godly, to embrace what you were created for to be, right? Or you can choose to be demonic, even though you were first made in a godly image, right? And so once you decide to give your life to Jesus, now you have a completely new self. You are, you are born again. And, you're, and this new self, is a whole other level of God's image that you're made in. Because you're saying yes to God, this new self is being given to you that you can choose to put on. By giving your life to Jesus, by surrendering, you put on this new self. And this is a godly, righteous, godly self with righteousness, purity, like God, thinking like God, being like God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, so we have to realize that this is available for us. We have this new self now, but we have to actually put it on. It doesn't just happen automatically. We have to choose. We were born again, and we are given this, but we have to then put it on. It's like putting on the armor of God. You can't just expect to be this powerful warrior of God that, that always has victory, that's a champion, if you don't have the armor. It's going to be really easy for for people with, uh, you know, the, the, the enemies with ammunition to take you down. But if you can simply put on the armor of God, helmet of salvation, belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet, the shoes with the, the peace of the gospel, hallelujah, everything, every part, sword of the spirit, the word of God. If you can put it all on, you are unstoppable. You will have victory always. But you got to put it on. But so in the same way, how it says, put on the armor of God, we got to put on our new self. We have to have this revelation. This is here available for us. This is the real us. But we have to make that daily decision to put it on. To make the intention, to take the action, to put it on. And if we will put it on, we will find ourselves being godly. We will find ourselves not struggling with the flesh so much. Amen? So putting it on is also another word of re renewing the mind. So that's what I'm going to teach you, how to renew the mind and how to put on our new nature so that you can be transformed and matured. Hallelujah. So one meaning of renew, if you look up def the definition of renew, one of the definitions is replace. Replace. So if you have junk, if you have bad things in your heart, bad things in your mind, immoral things going on there, and if you just let them stay there or you are annoyed by them or you're, you're just like, I don't know what to do. This is just who I am, I guess. I don't know what to do to get rid of these things. Ah, They're just going to stay there. You have to choose to do something about these things in the, in, the, in the area of renewing your mind. So in this meaning, replace. You have to take the action of replacing the filth of the heart that's there with the truth of God, with God's word, with your new self. Amen? Colossians 3.16 says, Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being. So here it's saying, let the word of Christ have its home in you, dwell in you. So to how to renew your mind, it means to replace, to take the word of God, take the truth of God, the logos written word of God, the Bible, and the present tense spoken word of God, and replace it 
in your heart with the, the dirty. Because when you, if you don't do anything, the dirtiness stays there. But if you take the action of putting something else in there, it like forces the dirtiness out. If you're putting it in there, there has to be, there has to be room made. So it automatically has to be pushed out. Replace. Replace. Hallelujah. So, you know, Ephesians 4.21, it says, you put off your old self. You completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new self. So you see, we get rid of the old self. We, we renew our minds. We remember, this is not me. I don't want this in me. This is my old self, but I have to take the action of doing away with it, not, not uh, uh, believing the devil's lies that this is just life. This is how you are, or you have to seek something else to try to get rid of this. No, put it, t- discard it, put it off, and put in the word of God, the truth. Hallelujah. Replace. Replace it with the truth. Um, It also says, Colossians 3.16, let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom. Now, this is not speaking just like, you know, just to ministers or something, but this is speaking, you know, as you share the word of God, as you testify of the truth you've heard, the truth you've learned about, even something as simple as God is alive. God doesn't want you to be in bondage. God wants you to be free. This is your inheritance, freedom, healing, abundant life. This is what God is doing now. This is what he did in the Gospels and and in the Acts Church, and he's doing it now today. You're teaching people. Like, that's truth. Like, if you're sharing that on your social media platforms, if you're sharing that with a stranger or a friend or family member, it's a form of teaching. It's a kind of teaching that God does want you to do, not the kind of teaching that's outside of what he's called you to do, outside of your dominion, um, but, but, but taking the word that you've been given, taking the word that's been spoken, taking the word that's been spoken by your spiritual leaders, servants of God, and that same word carrying it to others, teaching it to others, sharing it with others. Amen? So it says, admonish, and uh, uh, as you teach spiritual things, and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So worship and praise and singing, this is an instruction from God. This is one of the big reasons that we do it at church every, all the time, every Sunday, is this instruction here, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Uh, so as you put your mind on the word of God, you, you think on the word of God, you read the word of God, you listen to the word of God being spoken, and it, you also listen to godly music, worship songs, and sing these songs, the right kind of songs, that is what is renewing your mind. That's part of replacing, putting in, putting in the new self that cleans the heart is by you doing these things. Um, and I, and I, and I, you know, here, the worship team, Jean Tal is selecting, and, and our whole worship band, or they, they all select, so the, they select songs, not just any song, not just what's on the, the hits, the charts, or whatever. Um, I, they go over the songs with me every time because we can't sing just any song. We don't want to sing an old wine song because that's not only not going to help us, but that could damage us spiritually. We got to put on the new self. We got to put in the new wine, only the new wine. So uh, th- it's important even to, to pay attention to the music you're listening to, the songs you're singing along to. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking right now, like there's one Christian song where I would hear it and I'm like, oh, that's catchy. And then the, these words would come and I didn't agree with those words. Like it was kind of like, declaring the devil's going to do this to me, but I won't let him, which that's powerful. Yes, I won't let him, 
But we don't need to be declaring the devil's going to try to do this to me. You know, we don't need to be speaking that. And, but that takes spiritual maturity. <laughs> it takes spiritual maturity. It takes your eyes being opened up to know what are the right words to speak and what could actually be words of death. What could actually be opening up a door to the devil? It's not just cussing and speaking something like, I'm going to die or I'm afraid. But it can be something like singing along to a song that's just not spiritual, spiritually mature. And we don't need to be speaking these words because our words have so much power, especially when we are anointed. They have even more power. Amen. Hallelujah. But this is a part of it. So fill your life with the word of God. Read the word of God. Listen to the word of God. And listen to, to, to good, godly, new wine, speaking the truth, music, and sing along to it. That's part of putting on your new nature and renewing your mind. Hallelujah. So um, also, it says... This is how we will become spiritually mature. It says in Ephesians, um, or Romans 12 too, the verse I read, you will mature spiritually. This is one of the big ways we, re we mature spiritually is by renewing our mind. Hallelujah. I have, we can bring this table up now. I have a little example for you all today to show you a picture, a physical picture of what happens when we renew our mind. So they're going to bring up the table right now. All right. So we're going to have it on the screen here so everyone can see up close. There we go. All right. So this here is water with dirt in it. And this is a picture of your heart that has not necessarily a heart, uh, not necessarily one that has demons, but a heart that has junk in it, junk from the old self, the old nature, junk in the soul. So this can be um, a spirit of fighting. This can be uh, just that, not meaning a demon of fighting, but this like inkling to fight, inkling to be angry. This can be um, this inkling to lie. This can be uh, uh, this inkling to be jealous, envy, uh, inkling to be to be uh, just immoral, judgmental, yes, <laughs> all sorts of things. Any kind of um, immoral kind of thinking, dirtiness. This is what that represents. All right, and so you you find yourself being a believer, born again. You love Jesus, and you know it's wrong to have these things in your heart. And you don't want to have these things in your heart. Um, and you've been delivered. You've been delivered. And so you're, you're like, some of you may be like, kind of like Austin, he shared in the beginning. How do I get rid of this? Well, how, how can I get rid of this? I don't want this here. I've been trying many things. I've prayed to God so many times. Um, I've renounced and I've renounced and I've renounced. I've even given an offering to God, made a sacrifice, saying, Lord, I believe you will free me. I don't want this. I make this sacrifice believing you will free me. And these are all important things to do. These are all parts of, uh, I mean, keys that unlock full freedom in your life. Amen. But a lot of people, some of you here, you've done all of these things. And it's still there. And you don't know how to get rid of it. And many times you did all these things and you find it still here and then you have condemnation. You've asked God to forgive you. You feel sorry for it. You're repenting. You ask God to forgive you. And you still have this. So now you feel condemned. So there's a way to get rid of this that many people are missing. Um... This right here, all of these, all of these, are re is representing the word of God. The truth, God's truth. His word, his written word, his spoken word, the, the, the true godly songs. 
So if you will start reading them, reading the word of God, reading these true words, and listening to the spoken word of God again and again and again, look what will happen to your heart. As I pour it, this is the this is this is the this is meaning you're reading the word of God and you're listening to the word of God, the spoken word of God from true serv- anointed servants of God. Okay, it's still dirty. I stopped. You think I should keep going? So we should keep reading the word of God and keep listening to the word of God. Don't stop short. Don't stop after one day or one week and think, I don't feel much different. I still feel dirty. Okay, so let's keep going. Keep reading. Keep listening. Okay, I stopped after a few months. I still feel dirty inside. I don't see much change. Should I keep going? Okay, let's, let's keep going. Let's, let's, let's really apply this word of God that we've been taught, despite how we feel. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, you can't see it on the camera. That's not how it looks in real life. But it's looking, it's looking more clear. It's looking lighter. You see that? Now you can see it on the camera. What happens? It's gone. Or not all the way gone, but so much of it is gone. Wow. It's a miracle. Should I stop? Okay, we're going to keep on going. Hallelujah. Can I have help? Can I have help? Can I have help? I just want someone to hold my microphone. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Just this bowl. Look what we have here. No sign of the dirt. It's clear completely. That's literally what happens in your heart when you renew your mind with the word of God. And you keep going and you keep going and you don't stop and you don't get frustrated when after a week or a month or even several months or even nine months, you don't feel much change. You just keep going. You just keep going. You just keep renewing, renewing, replace, put it in there, put it in there. And it pushes out the dirt. It pushes out the old nature completely. If you'll just keep going, if you'll just keep renewing your mind. Isn't that powerful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can remove this now. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, I I wanted you to see that because God spoke this to me. Like this is literally exactly what will happen to your heart. If you will take renewing your mind with the word of God seriously. You will wake up one day wondering, where did it go? What happened? You forget, you forgot about it completely. You forgot about all these things you used to have in your heart. It's nowhere to be found. 
Hallelujah. So usually, usually people, they find so much dirtiness and they read the word of God in a little bit and they're not, and they're listening to the word of God and they're not feeling so much, too much change. And so they just go to this place of trying to figure out what to do and they become frustrated because they think, oh, reading the word and, and listening to the word isn't really working. So they kind of like stop. They don't trust it. Because as you saw in the beginning, it didn't, we didn't see the, the difference right away, right? Because there was so much dirt. So when there's so much dirt and you put a little bit of water, yeah, it's, it's, unnot- it's not that noticeable that there's a little change, right? So a lot of people, they end up getting so discouraged, feeling so condemned. But the right way to go about this, when you find that there's dirtiness in your heart, when you find that there's just immorality in your heart the right way to go about it is to renounce is to go to God and ask for forgiveness genuinely be sorry repent and from there you need to know you need to believe the word of God that you are a new creation that the moment you go to God and ask for forgiveness you are new and, and so it's, it's not just, oh, yeah, I became new the day I became a believer. Sometimes mistakes happen. Sometimes you step, people step out of God's will. And when you come to, and ask God for forgiveness, it's the same thing that happens again. It's not a one-time experience that you are become a new creation. When you earnestly turn to God and ask for forgiveness, he wipes away those sins that you just did, that you should have known better, he wipes them away when you're genuinely sorry. Amen? He wipes them away and you become new. That old self, the old self of yesterday, when you should have known better, is gone. So you need to accept that word of God instead of believing the lies of condemnation. Amen? And so from there, you need to realize, okay, I'm a new creation now. My old self is gone. I need to be renewed, though. The way to be, yes, I, I'm not surprised that I still find this dirtiness in the heart. The, I've learned the way to get rid of it is by renewing the mind. And it's a process. It doesn't happen just automatically, instantly. It's a process. So I'm okay with that. I'm not going to feel condemned about the dirt that's still there. I'm going to focus on what God has told me to do simply renewing my mind with the word of God. That's all I'll worry about, or not worry about, but concentrate on. Amen? Hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5, 13. If we are out of our mind just unstable fanatics, as some critics say, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. For the love of Christ controls and compels us, because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that all those who live could no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for their sake. So from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view, according to worldly standards and values, Though we have known Christ from a human point of view, now we no longer know him in this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. Renewed as we accept Holy Spirit to renew us. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Amen? So the old has passed away and the new has come when you are truly in Christ. When you accept the renewing of the Holy Spirit by doing your part to renew your mind. Praise God. Proverbs twenty two seventeen 17 says, listen carefully and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge, for it will be pleasant if you keep them in mind. 
incorporating them as guiding principles. Let them be ready on your lips to guide and strengthen yourself and others so that your trust and reliance and confidence may be in the Lord. I have taught these things to you today, even to you. So let's go back to verse 17. Listen carefully and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind to my knowledge. It will be pleasant if you keep them in mind. So listen carefully and hear the words of the wise. So this is speaking of anointed servants of God, your spiritual leader. Listen to the words of the wise. To renew your mind, it's just as important to be listening always to the spoken word of God through the true servants of God. Just as important to do that as it is to read the word of God. Because as you hear the anointed teachings, there's something happening in your spiritual life, in the spiritual realm. You ever notice that, do you ever notice the difference of like going to a place where anointing is not and hearing the message? And it's good words, it's all truth, it's the Bible, it's Jesus, right? But then if you go, but then, but do you see the difference between that and then going to a place where the anointing is, an anointed servant of God, and the, the, the difference you feel in your spiritual life, like you, you, you feel your spirit coming alive. You feel more energized and excited about Jesus, about life, about the future. You feel motivated to, 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 to spend more time with God when you leave the church. When you leave the, the live stream, you feel like you, you feel on fire. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced, hallelujah. Have you experienced the difference? And it's all about the anointing. You can have someone preaching like this with no anointing. And maybe you'll feel some kind of emotion there. Maybe you'll feel a little excited there. But when you leave, you don't feel that way anymore. It's kind of just like a concert experience. It's nice there in the moment, but then you leave and there's no change. But then if you hear anointed teaching, you don't, you can have that or you can have this. It doesn't matter. It's the anointing that brings the change. It's the anointing that feeds your spirit, that makes your spirit come alive. So you can listen to a, a, a preaching that's, that's tame and calm, calm <laughs> in words. In level of voice, but whoo, you, you can be changed forever. You can be set on fire and so energized, even when the word was spoken calmly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the power of the anointing. So God has given Ephesians 4.11 gifts to the body of Christ, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He's given anointed servants of God, anointed offices in the fivefold ministry for this purpose for one of the purposes being this to feed your spirit man to 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 break down the word of god to bring revelation to this word of god that you've been reading and you haven't really understood you haven't grasped the real meaning of it this purpose of these ministers of these anointed servants of god is to bring the word to life so that this word can come alive in you and not just be a textbook. But you can really have spiritual understanding. Your spiritual eyes will open up because these words carry power on them. The words you're receiving right now carry power on them. And so there's things happening in the spirit. Your spiritual eyes are opening up. Your, your carnal nature is being pushed down. Your spiritual man is rising. And so you leave this place change and you leave changed one of the areas being your spiritual eyesight your, your and your ability to hear God and see him in the scriptures so this is so important that you for one take it seriously to hear and really receive the word of God coming 
through anointed servants of God, through your, anoint, through your leader. So that when you read the word of God, you can really be hearing God, getting true revelation. You're getting new wine in you, so you have the new wine revelation when you read the word of God. Amen? So this is all important in getting the cleanness, getting your heart clean. Because part of the reason why your heart's dirty still is because the old wine is holding you back. You know, like the Pharisees, they had old wine. And they had dirt in their heart. I mean, so much dirt that they could not see Jesus, that they ended up persecuting and crucifying him. Right? And so... This, this, this is why it's so important for you to hear this new wine and receive this new wine. Because this is such a big key to getting out of Pharisee nature. To get out that old wine that's, that's keeping your eyes shut and not really seeing God. Where he's moving. Who he's moving through. This old wine is also this, this wrong doctrine of Jesus. Of that, that, that he's coming with condemnation. That's wrong doctrine. That's old wine doctrine. That, that your salvation and your approval by God is based on your works. So you put all this focus on a checklist of reading the Bible and praying and doing all these things for the exact amount of time that you're supposed to be doing it and following all these laws and rules. And you think that's how God's approving you. You live in this mindset. You're going to be stuck in this old wine, stuck in this bondage, stuck with dirtiness in your heart. You need the new wine, the Jesus way, the power of Jesus. To, to bring the truth that brings purity and, and cleanliness in the heart. Hallelujah. Because the new wine is, is, is truth, is love, is purity. Right? But the old wine, like that the Pharisees carried, had judgment, had pride, had focusing on works and not focusing on your heart. I got to do these things so God will be happy with me, but not looking at his heart looking on what you can do rather than looking at God's heart. So you become blind to knowing God's heart. We see this today in this revival. Like people are so focused on doing what they know, on the traditions of men in the church, on doing things the way they think it's supposed to be done in the church, the inside of the box way, and they just keep their eyes focused there. Doing the works, the old wine way, doing the works, going through the traditions. That they're so busy here that they can't look up and see God's heart. And God's heart is saying, I have brought my revival. Stop praying for revival and join my revival. Stop praying for revival in your way and come join my true revival, which is my way. Come and receive what I am doing. Come receive my anointing, moving through servants of God that I've chosen, that you haven't chosen. Come receive this ministry of deliverance. Accept this in your churches. See the beauty of it and the importance of it in your churches. You know, this is what God's saying. But they are filled with the old wine, not receiving the new wine and just having their eyes there that they can't even look up and see God's heart. So I'm sharing with you this, um, this great importance of receiving anointed teachings, what it does for you in the spiritual realm, for your spiritual life. It's something supernatural. It's not just listening to true words. It's listening to anointed true words that are changing you, that are helping you in your rigid ways like this to... Look up, supernaturally changing, happening. Look up and see God's heart and hear his voice clearly what you've been missing. Amen? Yeah. And so, so this is why it's so important to, 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 to really be a disciple of the teachings that God's called you to be listening to through anointed servants, through your, your, your leader. Hallelujah. And also, number two, I mean, the second reason why this is important is because um, the, like what God's doing right now, the prophetic messages are so important for your life. Like God's doing something right now. Get on board with what he's doing right now so you can receive what he's doing. Let me give you an example. Like 
a flourish conference. What God was specifically doing was delivering people from stagnancy and barrenness. And I know even one person, they testified, one of our five family members, and he's like, I didn't even think I needed that. But I went anyways. <laughs> and sure enough, I did. I didn't even realize there was areas I was stagnant in that I was, I was being held back. And now my life's flourishing and I see the difference. But what if, what if people, like, came, you know, they have their agenda. They may be, they're like, oh, I am so fascinated by angels. I just want to do an in-depth study on angels. And, like, so what if there's, or there's a workshop on angels and dreams and visions and or interpreting dreams or something like that? So what if there's, like, a workshop of that the same weekend as Flourish Conference? Right? But God had spoken, this is what I'm doing right now. And I'm doing this right now, not just because like one, two, three, ten people, a hundred people need it. Like everyone in my body pretty much needs this right now. And this is what I'm doing. Like this is what I'm doing now. This is the, the, the part of beautifying and preparing my bride that I'm doing now. Like this has to come first. And so if they miss out and they did the, the spiritual thing. I mean, it sounds good. It's about God. They worship Jesus there. <laughs> but God wasn't there. I mean, like God wasn't doing something in power there. But God was doing it at the conference, which is what that person needed. The freedom, the teaching that taught the people, that taught you, this is why you're stuck. And for many people, they probably didn't expect that message. The message, if you, to summarize it, and you can watch the, the Flourish Conferences streamed live, the replays, on my live section of my YouTube page. But to summarize it, it was that people, so many people right now have a spiritual blockage where they can't hear God and see what God is really speaking and doing. They're, they're stuck, and they need to be free from this bondage. And once their eyes are opened up, now they'll be able to really step in God's will. And this is where they will flourish. But there's a lot of old wine bondage that needed the anointing to destroy the yoke, that needed surrender to God by coming to the conference, for example. You know, where God specifically was like, I'm coming with this word to, in, to instruct the people of what's been missing in their life. This has been the reason why you found bond, uh, 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 stagnancy and barrenness in all these different areas is because of this right here. You're tiptoeing around God's will. You, 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 you're, you're stuck in, with your spiritual eyesight because you haven't fully surrendered. And you, you, you're, you have this resistance towards the new thing that God's doing and the new wine. So you're teetering around the will of God and it's keeping you stuck, keeping you from flourishing. So the message was surrender to God now. When God surrenders you, now you're giving him permission to free you from this bondage over your spiritual eyesight. Blocking your knowledge, your, your ability to have uh, uh, understanding and spiritual knowledge about God and his kingdom and his ways. Hallelujah. And now you can flourish. So anyways, God is doing something specific now. And like each word that comes forth, it's something you need now. It's not for you to think, oh, what's the, the part about God's kingdom and his ways that I want to learn about now? No, listen to the teachings. Follow the teachings. It's prophetic. You need it now. You don't understand why you need it now. You don't understand why God's given you this message now. But you just need to obey and, and say, take the teachings seriously and listen to them again and again and say, yes, Lord. So that's how you, your, your mind will be renewed because you're staying in line with this teaching that God wants you to actually be hearing, you know? And like right now, God is so much more simple than we make him out to be many times. Like, like right now, it's simple what God's doing. He, the, he wants to deliver his people. His heart is my people must be free. There is so many people in bondage, so many believers in bondage that no, don't need to be in bondage. His power is available. He's brought revival. He's poured his anointing in servants of God today. And, and so it's like 911. People need to be free. People need to accept my move so people can be free, so more people can be free. People need to accept my anointing. People need to accept my servants of God.
so that my anointing can move through them so that people can be free and saved and healed. People got to be free. So, so there's a lot of messages right now. The messages that I speak are having to do with this message, are having to do with revival. The messages I shared at Flourish, these important messages of receiving the new wine, receiving what God's doing now, receiving his apostles and his prophets, his fivefold ministry. Look what he was doing in the Acts church. He wants to do the same thing now today. Like these types of teachings that I teach on a lot, these are so important for you to get in you because God needs you to be such a bright light for this message. God needs you to not waver with the old wine lies spouting through Pharisees of today. The more you get this word in you, the stronger you can be for God. So we're this unstoppable revival army. You know, I've seen many people over the past years, I've seen many people be so excited about what God's doing but they're not strong because they're not renewing their mind. They're not taking this grace that God's given, this, prof this move of God, this prophetic word coming at them seriously enough. They're not valuing it enough. They're not intently listening to the messages and replaying them and meditating on them and applying them. They're not doing that. And so guess what? The devil comes and plucks the seeds that have been planted, the good seeds, out of them. Like the scripture says, that can happen sometimes. Good seeds are planted in people in the good ground, but sometimes something plucks it, snatches out the seed. So if you're not valuing that word of God and doing what you need to be doing to keep that seed in you by renewing, 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 going back to the word, replaying the word, it'll get snatched out. That's the devil's assignment. That's the devil's assignment for Pharisee people out in the world. And so they speak these lies. They speak false accusations. They try to say, no, well, look at the word of God. They bring their old wine revelation that's wrong and try to say it's not truth, just like they did to Jesus, saying, you shouldn't be healing on the Sabbath. You're going against the word of God, you know? And so this is why I'm saying it's so important you get this revival message in you because otherwise it'll be snatched out of you and you'll be torn from God's will. That's what I've seen happen to so many people. I've seen people leave I've seen because of this reason they're not renewing their minds they're not valuing the prophetic spoken word of God so like the words of God that are released is these prophetic words these these words about revival the word that was released at flourish this is serious truth foundational truth that you need to get in you that's brand new for many of you that you need to get in you firm and because it's so brand new for you, like you've had so much old wine and now it's new wine, that's why you have to keep renewing your mind with it. Take the word of God seriously. It's not going to come just automatically. The majority out there believe the old wine. So if you don't take it seriously, you won't be strong. You see? And so like, like me here, I know the truth. I preach with conviction and passion. I don't preach like unsure because I've gotten the word in me I've stayed focused on this word many people ask me you know what are what are your favorite books and what are your uh, favorite ministers and everything God called me to stay focused on on the word I was hearing the prophetic word from my spiritual father prophet Dr. Joe Davey and that's a key of how I'm able to be strong be anointed and be so strong in this true word and being able to deliver this new wine to you, like here, receive this, and it's pure, and it's powerful. It has power on it. It's because I wasn't wishy-washy, but I stayed focused to this new wine that was new to me, you know, for your sake. So what, what I did, God is calling you to do so you can be strong revival army warriors whom God can use as leaders in different capacities, some as fivefold ministers, some as future branch leaders, some as just leaders being a bright light, bringing many people to Jesus in your workplace, wherever you are, speaking the truth boldly and unashamedly and with conviction. Like the simple word, like God is moving in power now, revivals now, his power is available for you. You know, instead of being wishy-washy like, I wonder what they will think. 
uh, there's a lot of uh, exposed videos about this revival, and I don't know. Instead of being wish-washy, you have this truth in you. And so you can say to somebody with a full, of, full of anointing, God wants to free you. I know this. And I'll tell you why. And I'll testify in my own life. And I'll proudly share the miracles that God's doing with you. And someone can be delivered and saved right there. Because you're a leader full of anointing. So, so that's why these revival messages, messages about deliverance, messages about the power of God, the anointing, the fivefold ministry, the new wine, like these specific messages, that's why God wants these to be in you strongly. Focus there, not focus on all these different areas, interpreting dreams, visions, angels, all the different many aspects that are wonderful, but we need to focus on what God is doing now. And this is your calling. This is how you will fulfill your purpose when you can be focused on what God is calling you to do now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I was, I just heard this testimony from Austin. Oh, side note. I have a podcast called Revival is Now Podcast. Uh, uh, Revival is Now on Spotify and iTunes and other places you can find podcasts. But um, I just started something new where I, I started interviewing some members from Fivefold Church about their testimonies. And it was so powerful. And we'll be releasing the first one soon. But stay tuned on my social media for when we announce that, okay? But anyways, um, Austin was one of them that I interviewed about their testimony, and he shared that with me just a couple weeks ago. He shared, um, I was at a one, and I knew he was really struggling at one point, and I would give him prophetic direction, and he applied the prophetic direction, and he applied, which the prophetic direction was just, you know, the, the word that I, that I speak here at church. Some, many times it was just repeated. You know, this word I've spoken, you need to apply this word, you need to believe this word and apply it. And I told him, go back and watch the No Longer Slaves message many times. And so he told me, he's like, at a nine? And I, I was so excited. I was so excited. And I just, I just praise God because this just reveals the power of renewing your mind. You don't, need, you don't need to keep looking for prayer and everything. Like, just renew your mind. Take this prophetic word, the instruction, seriously. Hallelujah. It really works. It really works. It's God's principle that works. And so as I was preparing for this message today, I, rem I remember that testimony. I said, the people got to hear this testimony. You know, he, he specifically listened to No Longer Slaves and, and other messages like how to maintain your deliverance again and again and again. And he said that every time there would be change from every time he listened, something broke off. So I just bring that to your remembrance to share with you, keep watching these messages. Value them. Like, see the power that they are. Like, see, see hope in that. See hope in them. Like, see them with faith. I am being changed as I'm watching this. I know 100%. There's anointed on this that's going to change my life forever. That's going to clean my heart. That's going to equip me. That's going to make me stronger in Christ. And keep playing them. R watch them again. Every message that I share now on Sundays, you should watch them again. You should take notes. You should write down parts that God really spoke to you. Like you learned something. And renew your mind. Make the practice. Make the intention to bring to remembrance those things that you learned. Write it down. And different days of the week, open it up. Oh, yes. God's taught me this on Sunday. And I'm letting this, I'm making sure this is going to stay a part of me. Not just a word I hear and it leaves and I forget about it. Amen. And especially like if you, like for Austin, there, he was, the devil was lying to him so much. It was just deep um, deceiving of the enemy in that area that he wasn't saying he wasn't yet free. And even manifesting so strongly that it would be fake manifestations happening. Because as a man thinks, so he is. So the devil can really... Um, you know, have his way in you so much if you believe his lies so strong that even fake manifestation could happen if the devil's saying, you have demons, you know? 
so strongly, and you don't. So um, if there are certain areas that you have struggled with, that you're currently struggling with, bookmark that message or messages and listen again and again and again and again. This is how you're going to be renewing your mind and pushing that dirt out. Hallelujah. And, and those of you that I, I, I'm going to remind you of this, I have a four-part teaching on how to maintain your deliverance. This is so important for everybody who needs deliverance and who has received deliverance. And if you have found yourself battling, like feeling like maybe demons came back, many times demons didn't come back, but it's that same scheme of the devil saying, demons are still in you. And these teachings really help you to be equipped to have your eyes opened up to the truth and be able to defeat this way of the devil trying to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as a reminder, of course, every Sunday I'm preaching a prophetic message and usually most Wednesdays um, that I'm not traveling, um, I preach a prophetic message. And also on Fridays, we have subscriber Q&A on Instagram. And um, you get to ask questions live and I answer them live. And there's also more prophetic teaching happening through that. So don't miss any of them if you can't. If you miss a live, make sure you watch the replay. But take them so seriously because this is the answer to your prayers for many of you. Or what's, what am I missing? This. Try it and see how your life will change. Amen? Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Remember yesterday how I, or not yesterday, last Sunday how I shared about, um, it was kind of like a part one to this message. I shared about how we have dominion over our thoughts. And um, I shared how I really have found peace and contentment every day of my life as soon as I really stepped into the anointing and received uh, anointing, equipping, encouragement, direction from my spiritual father, Prophet Dr. Joe Davey. So as soon as I did that, I, f I truly have found peace and contentment every single day. I don't have in my memory a day where I felt hopeless or I felt full of sorrow or I felt full of anger or I felt like giving up. I had these days that were really difficult and I weeped <laughs> when persecution happened. Attacks of the devil happened. But even in those times, as I renewed my mind, as I put my mind on the truth, and whatever is pure, worthy of praise, excellent. I received peace and contentment. And I didn't have fear. I didn't have worry. I knew this is uncomfortable, but this is God's will. This is the refining fire I need. And there will be victory. So I found peace and contentment as I put my mind on the truth and renewed my mind. So I shared with you that I really have found peace and contentment always. I shared that with you so you can know this is what's possible for you. And this is what God wants for you. This is truly possible. So here's another verse that is, is the secret of this contentment. Isaiah 26, 3. You will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you in both inclination and character, because he trusts and takes refuge in you with hope and confident expectation. So this promise is given that you will stay in perfect and constant peace when you renew your mind and stay focused on Jesus's word, the written word of God, the present tense word of God coming to you. Amen? So if you ever don't feel peace, you know what to do, right? Put your mind, put your eyes, put your ears on the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I speak over every person right now. I speak protection over this word, that this word today would never leave you. 
And I declare that from this day, your heart would be cleaned every day. And your mind would be cleaned every day. Your mind and your heart, your character would be transformed to be more like Jesus every single day. That you would be like that glass. That every day dirt is coming out and more purity is entering until it's nothing but pure, clean water. I speak this over you that this would happen to you from now, that there would be no more stagnancy. There, every single day, you would be becoming more like Jesus. Every single day, you would think more like Jesus, speak more like Jesus, feel more like Jesus, be more like Jesus. In Jesus' name, I declare eyes to open up now in the spiritual realm. Eyes to op open up more now. Thank you, Jesus. And I speak this, the dirtiness to come out of these hearts as you renew your mind from today. I speak a supernatural grace that with quickness, this dirt would come out of your hearts and your minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.